Hi all, in this video we are going to understand how to execute test cases. In a previous video we understood how to write requirements, how to write test cases and in this video we will be executing those test cases which we have written. So guys, we understood requirement module, business component module, test plan module. Now we have test resources module. Guys, test resources module is a module which is used by your lead. So test lead will be writing all the resources over here. It's simple and plain module in which we will be writing environment of our project, resources required for that project. So all the parameters which are there for our project, we will be writing it in the test resource module. So senior tester or test lead will be working on this module to identify to identify resources, environment, components of your test project. Next module over here is test lab module. So guys, test lab module is a module where we will be executing the test cases. So let's see how it works. So the base folder is root in this case. And if you see, we have two icons over here like other modules. We have two icons over here. If you click on unattached and you're not selecting root folder, you will see that these icons will be not selected or they will not be activated. So first you have to click on the root folder and then you will see this icon will get activated. Guys, now what is this? Like other modules, it is also to create the folder in order to separate or manage your modules. So right now I want to execute test cases for login module. So I will be creating folder for login module. I'll click on this icon over here and it is asking me for the folder name. Folder name is name of the module. It is login 1.0. I'll click on OK. And if you see your login 1.0 is created. Now we will click on the second icon. This is to create new test set and shortcut for that is Alt plus N. I'll tell you what is test set. Because test set is a combination of all the test cases for a particular module. For example, let's say to, in order to check login module, I have written 10 test cases. So combination of those 10 test cases is called test set. So here we will be giving test set name. So I'm passing it as build 1.0. Description. Checking functionality of login module because this test set is for login module. So checking functionality of login module. You can style it accordingly. You can make it bold. You can underline it. You can make it italic. You can change color of it. So we have all the options present over here for styling purpose. We'll click on OK. After clicking on OK, you will be landed on this page. In this page, we are on the details tab. First attribute on it is close date. Guys, close date is a date when do you think as a test case executor, when do you think that you will finish or complete the execution of all test cases. So here, when you will click on this drop down, you will see a calendar and you can choose date accordingly. So for example, I think I can finish execution on 13th of January. I'll choose that date. Status is open. That means execution is in progress. Now we will go to execution grid. Now execution grid is a tab under which you will be executing all the test cases. But guys, where are the test cases? If you remember, we have written test cases in test plan module. And I want those test cases over here because I want to execute them. Good thing about QC ALM is that every module is interconnected. If you want to use any information from one module to other module, if they are related, QC ALM gives you options for that. Now here, I want to use test cases from test plan. So guys, for that, you will be clicking on select tests. Whenever you will click on select tests, you will see on the side that test plan tree will appear. Test plan tree is actually test plan module. Under test plan, you will see that module for which you have written the test cases. If I expand it, you will see all the test cases I have written for this particular module. Now, this is in test plan and I want to transfer this in my test lab module in this sheet. 
in order to do so you can click on this folder and with this arrow mark you can send these test cases this side because you are clicking on folder so all the test cases under this folder will be moved to your execution grid but if you want to move a particular test case to your execution grid you will individually click on it and then by clicking on this arrow mark you can send that test case in the execution grid so you can send all the test cases by clicking on folder or you can send single or multiple test cases by clicking on particular test case and send them to the execution grid by clicking on this arrow mark so right now i want to send all the test cases so i'll click on login 1.0 click on this arrow mark over here it's asking me that do you want to add all the test cases in this grid yes we want to so we'll click on yes and you will see all the test cases will be added to your execution grid in your test lab module so now from test plan tree you have moved your test cases to test lab guys sometimes you will see that this plan tree is automatically open if it is automatically open then you can use it anyways but if it is not open then you can click on select test right now you can see select test is not activated because this test plan tree is open already so if it is not clickable then always search for this site and see whether test plan tree is already opened or not after this guys we'll start with the execution so we will click on the test case which we want to execute so this is highlighted i'll click on run after clicking on run you will see that this dialog box will appear in this you will see all the parameters of your test case first why we have written it description is checking functionality of cancel button precondition is saying login dialog box should be open on your screen so first we will be opening login dialog box as this is the precondition of my test case so we'll go to start click on flight this is the module guys on which we will be executing the test cases so login dialog box is opened on the screen and my precondition is satisfied now i'll click on begin run we will read step here guys so step number 1 is click on cancel button and after clicking on cancel button i will get expected result as login dialog box should be closed so what we will be doing now we'll click on cancel button because this is my step and what is actual observation over here login dialog box is closed so expected is login dialog box should be closed and actual is same as expected so login dialog box closed which is same as expected after entering the actual result you will click on end run this red square box will click on that you will be landed on your execution grid but look at the status over here guys status is not completed but our observation says that status is passed because actual result is same as expected result so we will change it over here and click on passed now let's execute the second test case it is same we'll click on run precondition is login dialog box should be open on your screen we'll go to start open login dialog box after satisfying the precondition we'll click on begin run step number 1 is enter agent name between 4 to 10 characters so i'm going to enter something which is between 4 to 10 characters so let's say we will enter a b c d e so this satisfy my condition it is between 4 to 10 characters so now we will click on the step number 2 and it is enter password as mercury so we will enter password field value as mercury step number 3 is click on okay button click on okay button we'll go ahead and click on okay button what is my expected result expected result is flight reservation window should be displayed now let's see flight reservation window is displayed which is same as expected so flight reservation window displayed and it is same as expected whenever your actual and expected is same that means your test case is passed so here we will click on end run and you will be landed to your 
execution grid. Here also we will change status to past because our actual and expected result was seen. Now guys we will be executing third test case. So third test case will give you the defect and now I will be telling you how to log defect after execution of your test case. So let's get started with the execution first. I'll click on run. Let's close this. Precondition is login dialog box should be open on your screen. So we will again go open dialog box. So step number one is enter agent name less than four characters. So I will enter something which is less than four characters. So I am entering ABC. Click on step number two. Enter password as Mercury. So we will click on Mercury over here. Step number three is click on OK button. So we will click on OK button. Expected result is error message should be displayed as please enter valid agent name and password. But look at the error message we got. It is agent name must be at least four characters long, which is not same as expected. So actual result error message is not same as expected. So error message is not same as expected. Now guys, before clicking on end run, you can log defect from here only. How we can log defect? If you look at this icon over here with red head and plus sign, this is to log defect directly from your execution grid. So during execution, if you encounter that your expected and actual is not same, you can log defect directly from here by clicking on this icon over here. So we will click on this and you will see your defect sheet will open. So this is our defect logging sheet. In this first is summary. So summary is why do you think it's a defect? Error message is not same as expected. First detected by this is a name of user. It will be your ID, your name. So this is the name of user, name of the tester, ID of the tester who logged in this defect. And here we will write down the severity. Severity means how severe this defect is, how much it is affecting business of client or how much it is stopping you to move further. So severity you can choose it as low because anyhow we are getting the error message. It's just error message text is not same as expected. Priority how soon it should be fixed. So we will say it should be fixed. So I'm keeping it as low also reproducible so guys reproducible defects are those defects which can be reproduced by following the same steps in any environment let's say if i follow the same steps in any environment i'm getting the same defect it is called reproducible but let's say if i'm not getting the same defect by following the steps those defects are called non-reproducible so here reproducible yes or no so if it is reproducible, you will click Y. Y is yes. If not, you will click on N. N is for no. So I'm keeping it as yes because it is reproducible. So here you will see date of logging defect. Assign to. So guys, here you can pass name of the developer because as a tester, you will definitely know that who is the developer associated with this functionality. So you can assign defect from here. So let's say I want to assign it to Roishan's user. So for that, I can select name of the developer to whom I want to assign it. Guys, you will get list of all the developers, all the users of Quality Center over here. And you can choose developer associated with this functionality. Now status of the defect is new because you have just logged in. So status will be new. If you look at the descriptions, we should have three things in the description as test parameters. Number one, steps which you as a tester followed, expected result and actual result. If you are logging defect directly from your execution grid, you will see that expected result and actual result will automatically appear. And if you look at the steps, you will see step number three because guys, we have written expected result in front of step number three. That's why you can see only step number three. But here you can complete it manually and you can write all the steps. So you can write step number one, enter agent name less than four characters. Step number two, enter password as Mercury. And step number three is click on OK buttons. So guys, these are my test parameters. Description, under description we have steps, expected result and actual result. 
good thing about quality center defect logging is that you can capture screenshot of your defect also guys as a tester it is very important for us to attach screenshots because it's going to help developer a lot in order to understand which type of defect it is where it is coming and how it looks like so this camera over here you can click on this icon whenever you will click on this icon you will see this dialog box opening this icon over here you can drag it and drop it on the defect which you captured so this is the error message we got drop this camera icon over here whenever you will drop it it will be captured and you can attach that snapshot you can snap multiple snapshots or screenshots over here so guys this is how you can log defect directly from the execution grid now at the end you can click on submit and your defect will be submitted now you can close it we can click on ok cancel it after closing it you will be landed to your execution grid here as we know we have to change the status to failed as this test case got failed so guys this is how you can execute test cases and you can log defect directly from your execution grid that's all for this video thanks for now